Yeah, I mean, I, I like the Auburn team a lot. I mean, how could you not? They just won at such a high clip. Uh, you know, the, just have the three losses. All the losses uh, are extremely close. A one-point loss just recently at Florida and two overtime losses. Outside of that, they've been flawless. Um, and and uh, just a very deep team that Bruce Pearl put together, highlighted, of course, by guys like Jabari Smith, Walker Kessler, Wendell Green, et cetera. Um, and I think that's going to present problems to teams when we get to the tournament. I think in terms of their overall seed, uh, right now they're my third number one, and and basically Arizona passed them because they just have the two losses, and both of Arizona's losses are are very strong. They're both road losses. One of them was at Tennessee, uh, a narrow loss that Arizona had, and another narrow road loss. Um, so Arizona's just nipping them out uh, by a smidge. Uh, if Auburn can close strong, you know they'll close with a huge game on Saturday at Tennessee. That's going to be extremely valuable. Uh, to put right at the top of their resume, that's actually going to probably grade out as a better win than beating Kentucky at home just because it's on the road. And, um, you know, that could actually probably uh, give the committee a lot to think about to put them back as the number two. I think the problem with um, Auburn when you compare them to Gonzaga to try to get back to the number one overall slot is the fact that Gonzaga is just dominating every uh, measurable metric in terms of performance. Uh, versus, you know, Auburn will have the stronger resume uh, but some of Auburn's narrow wins and kind of slow starts lately have held their metrics back. They're, they're now averaging out to the 11th best team. Again, they have the resume to support a one seed, so I don't think that jeopardizes that. But I do think um, it will make the committee hesitate by putting them all the way up at the top of the board.